what is good guys and welcome back to my channel it has been so blooming long i swear the last time i uploaded a video was probably in may may we're in november i'm not even gonna bother counting the months it's a lot of months um a lot has happened since then. <laughs> i think my last video i uploaded was a um a birth story video because I gave birth guys I had a baby he is doing really well I haven't come on here and like made a whole introduction video because motherhood is not easy <laughs> it is oh it's not easy guys have you seen my hair like look at this fluff like you've never you never seen me like this fluff fluff coming out my hair because having a baby and looking after a baby you completely forget about yourself and it's terrible and the only times I actually do my hair is when I'm filming a video. How many videos have you seen? Exactly. So I need to get my life sorted. Um, let me start by taking out this hair. So this video is going to be like a, I guess it's a get ready with me, but a cornrow version because, you know, I don't do makeup. I might need to learn because my skin lately has been a bit new. Um, but yeah, so what's new? I've updated you guys a little bit on the community section where I just like post little pictures of my son. My son's name is Nazir, Nazir Karaya. And um, if you guys don't already follow me on Instagram, do, because that's where you get like the majority of my, my life updates and my baby videos and all that kind of thing. So make sure you check out my Instagram, which is just Ida Karaya. Um, it's basically been taken over by him. It used to be me and my hair. But now, I mean, once you have a baby, do you ever take a picture of yourself? I mean, I can't remember the last time I took a picture and I felt like I looked good. So this video will just be like a, um, a catch up, sit down. I've got my mic here. You can't really see it, but I guess it's a kind of a, a podcasty vibe. So I am just going to take out these boys, which I've been in for so long, as you can probably see. After giving birth, I started to lose my hair. I started to get postpartum hair loss. Mainly my edges though, like these corners here were going. I don't know how well they've um, come back in, but they started to grow back, which is always good. Oh my God, my hair's got... <sighs> I didn't want to wash my hair, but look at this. Can I get away with it? If I just spray, you guys won't tell anyone, will you? If I just spray it, I mean, who can be bothered to wash it right now? I just want to have a quick hairstyle. Oh, it might need a wash. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm gonna have to wash it soon. Oh! It's got blue lint in my hair. Guys, I've never, my hair has never been in such a state. It has, ay, ay, ay. What time is it? I might have to go and do a quick wash. Oh my good grief. My hair has never been this bad. Okay, I honestly have to wash my hair. Look at that. No, okay, I'm, I'll be back. I think that's the quickest hair wash I've ever done in my life. Now uh, let's part again. Okay, as I was saying, I lost a lot of hair postpartum. It started off maybe like, I was still in the hospitals, so maybe in like May. Around the time I did my last update, um, I would comb my hair and so much hair would come out on the comb and it just kept getting worse every single time that I did it. And I was like, oh my God, no. But um, everyone was suggesting all different kind of things, which I appreciate. Honestly, I didn't end up doing anything. I just let my hair do its thing. I didn't continue taking any prenatals. I didn't do anything. But people were suggesting prenatals, um, rosemary, it's meant to be good in the hair. Um, what else was they saying? There were some products that people were recommending. I didn't, I couldn't bother and I didn't do it. But I guess my hair is okay now. It's like back to its normal amount of shedding. I am just, It's kind of gross. Shea butter mixed with olive oil. Just gonna put it on my hair. 
and the back I would have originally twisted it if I um, didn't have to wash my hair but I'm just going to plait it I think and yeah let me just plait it in is this medium sized you guys can't see because of the um bloody sofa behind me it's quite dark sorry about that but not much is going to be happening at the back of my head anyways just going to plait it and do a braid out the ends I'm just going to add some more shea butter and just curl it so yeah back to the whole baby situation so we had him in March and it was a lot of back and forth between um, home and the hospital I don't know if I really I don't think I've fully gone into detail about like what happened but basically whilst I was pregnant and I was on the ward um, after my waters broke so my waters broke at 25 weeks and for two weeks I was at the hospital whilst I was in the hospital some woman on the ward because the area that they put me in was um what did I call it the antenatal unit so they had me on a ward with other women who were mainly there because they were in con like having contractions or they were being induced and they were going to go and have their baby soon there was only one other woman who had been there for I think a couple of weeks more than I had been and she had other issues but it was like I was pretty much me and this other lady were the only two who were there on for the long haul so anyways when I was on that ward I was informed that there was another woman who was staying I, I guess a few beds away from me or something who had the vid and because of that and because it's all open air the only thing is that separating you is um curtains because of that I was classed as a close contact of somebody who had the vid. Now this is what March this year so it was still an issue but it wasn't as big of an issue. Um, so because of that they moved me into a, another area where it was just me and another woman who had been in contact, allegedly in contact and they were testing us pretty much every day and we were both negative so that kind of just stopped crossing my mind I was like okay we're negative um the story is over and we didn't get the vid but I give birth um if you want to hear the whole full story go on to the video but I give birth obviously my child is premature so he was going to stay in the hospital in the uh, neonatal intensive care unit um, and I was, what happened? So the day I gave birth, they wheeled me down. I didn't even need the wheelchair to be honest, but they offered to wheel me down. I was like, you know what? Wheel me. So they wheeled me to go see him and I was able to see him that day. Then, um, that night they wanted me to stay on the unit just to make sure everything was fine. So I was in another room in the hospital, but then someone comes to me and they were like, oh, remember like a week and a bit ago when you were a close contact of somebody who had the vid because of this you're no longer allowed to go and visit your son at that point I was so over everything I had pretty much been in the hospital for two weeks apart from that one night before I gave birth and I don't know what was going over me but I was like okay whatever and it is what it is I know I haven't got it. I think it was already been like 10 days since I was supposedly in a close contact. Because of this, I can no longer go see my son. Obviously, I was upset. Um, my husband was still able to go and see him. The rules were very strained. If a person that was not in the hospital was a close contact of somebody in the outside world, nobody would know. No one would know unless you've tested positive yourself. But they make you do a test before you go into the actually no they don't they stop making people do tests anyways it was a bit mm, it was kind of like they were just doing it to save them themselves and i get it if i had it and i of course i would not want to go next to these vulnerable babies honestly i understood so then later on someone comes to me and they're like oh you know what we've we're gonna test you again and if it's negative you're fine to go see your son it's all good i'm like oh thank god so i didn't actually miss a day seeing him so they tested me, everything was fine. 
I went downstairs to go see him and I was like, oh yeah, so happy to see him. The main woman that works there, the main nurse, whatever she is, she comes to me and she's like, oh yeah, congratulations. And then she's like, oh, by the way, you, you're double jabbed, right? And I was like, no, I haven't even got one. She's like, oh, that changes the whole situation then. I was like, what do you mean it changes the whole situation? What's the, what is the difference? This jab doesn't do anything, but okay. Um, and she was like, oh yeah, you now have to wait the full, was it full 10 days or something? I was like, are you serious? So I'm now allowed to see my son for like five minutes until you come and tell me, no, sorry, you have to now go and isolate for another, well, I think it was like another three days or something. Something stupid, but uh, it wasn't making any sense. The math wasn't mathing because the day that I supposedly was in contact was a lot longer than what they were claiming. Anywho, I now am discharged and I'm told I'm not allowed to see my son for another, I think it was like maybe like three days. <sighs> and I was just, yeah, over it all. First, I tried to say it has to be 14 days and I was like, no, you're, you're taking the mick. You're absolutely taking the mick because I don't have the vid and this is just... Ay, 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 ay. I haven't fully spoken about this. I can just feel the anger building up inside of me. So I had to come home and my husband would have to go every day to take in the express milk that I was pumping for him and send me pictures and the nerves that would build up inside of me because your son, your child is in the hospital. You don't know what's going on with them. You know that they're in a vulnerable position because they were born way too early. And now you have to wait for an update from your husband who has to now listen to the doctors to see what the doctors are saying and relay the information to you. So every day in my nerves, like I'll be so anxious just waiting to hear with the latest update about him. The first few weeks were tough because he had issues with his kidney and all this stuff that I'm not going to go into properly, but, um, He's fine now, but they basically warn you of what could happen. They'll tell you the worst, basically, and you have to deal with that information. And then on top of that, you have people messaging you, and they mean well, I get it, but messaging you every day, asking for updates on his how he's doing and all this stuff, and you're just taking in all this information. You're going to see him, when I was able to see him, going to see him and seeing him with all these wires and all these tubes and then people are asking for pictures and people are asking for updates on a daily basis top tip guys if you happen to have somebody that you know that is that has a baby that's in the neonatal unit whether they're premature or whether they're poorly or whatever it is don't constantly ask them for updates it's draining it's like what do you want me to tell you if i tell you this information the next day things are different. So what's the point of me telling you now if tomorrow everything is fine or if tomorrow things get worse? Do you want me to tell you every single time something happens? So that got very annoying. Um, but eventually, because we were there for pretty much three months, people stopped asking. It would just be like, oh, we'll tell them every once in a while how things are going. Um, and also don't ask them if they've put on weight and all this stuff because my son had a weight gain issue. And he's still quite a small baby. Um, so the constant questions about weight, how much is he eating? How much is he weighing? How's he doing? How's this? How's that? It's like, oh, the journey there enough is draining. Having to answer everyone's questions was draining even more. And I get it. You know, you want to make sure that the, everything is good. And it may be your first time experiencing a premature baby in your family or your friendship group or whatever, but... <sighs> yeah, it was just getting too much. Anyways, he was in the hospital for, I think I would like to say almost two months before we were transferred to a hospital close to home. I must say, I preferred the first hospital that I was in, even though it was further away. Shout out to my gang. You guys know, if you're watching and you were there with me in the hospital, yeah, shout out to you guys. Um, I definitely preferred the first hospital. That day in itself was traumatic. The people that were transferring my son called in and they were like, oh, um, we're gonna be there in what, within an hour. So don't give him a feed between now and then because they don't want him to get um, sick on the journey, basically. The journey was very shaky, shaky, shaky. So 
we gave him the feed at one o'clock. I think that was the last time he ate and they called maybe about two-ish. So, okay, cool. He's not due another feed until four. <sighs> four comes around. They're nowhere to be seen. The people keep saying, oh yeah, this, this, that, giving us excuses. My son is now getting hungry, okay? And you're telling us you're coming soon, but don't feed him. So he now he misses his four o'clock feed. <sighs> then it comes to six o'clock. These people are still nowhere to be seen. Saying, oh, there's traffic, there's this, this, that. They finally get there and it's like seven. He's meant to be due his next feed. He's missed his four o'clock feed. Now it's seven o'clock. This boy is starving, okay? They're giving him um, glucose through his cannula. So he has like a drip of glucose to make sure his energy levels are still there. But his belly is rumbling. He's hungry. He's a baby, he doesn't understand, so he's screaming. These people are taking their sweet time to get all the transfer over and all this stuff. I'm vexed. I'm looking at them like straight faced. I'm annoyed at every single one of the transfer team right there. Then, bloody, um, get in the, the truck, was it not the truck, the van to transfer him. He gets to the next hospital. It's like 8.15. By the time they've transferred everything and by the time they've done all the notes, whatever, it's 8.15. And I say, can you feed my son, please? He's starving. He hasn't eaten since one o'clock. So bless them. They got the food ready and they fed him straight away as soon as that was ready. But the transfer team had the nerve. She had the nerve to then say, oh, you know, I was really late. <laughs> we went to the wrong hospital. <laughs> I was looking like my blood was boiling. I had to keep it in. I'm composed. But my blood was boiling. You're, you're laughing at the fact that you have my child starving. Telling him he, oh, God, let's not even relive this. The next hospital is a lot more homey. The vibe is a lot more chilled, a lot more laid back. It just feels like, oh, this is nice, you know? Even like the decorations in the in the room and stuff, it was just felt more at home. I feel like we were at the right place for the right time of his life. So at the beginning, he definitely needed to be in a more, I guess, secure or like hospital feeling environment. And then towards the end of his hospital journey, it was nice to have a more homey environment. And I was also able to stay with him and live with him for, I think I ended up staying for three weeks almost. Live with him until he was fit enough to come home with us. So then in June, one week before his due date, he finally came home. Oh, my baby. He finally came home and let me tell you, it was rough. Oh my gosh. I was so used to um, him being in the hospital. <laughs> and like, if I got overwhelmed, I was able to go home and that kind of thing. And it was basically being, having a babysitter that whole time of his life. And then now having to get used to him being there with you all the time. And when you're sleeping, him being there, oh my God, newborns. I don't know about all newborns, but newborns are noisy. That baby, when I, the first night I stayed with him in the hospital, when I actually was able to room in, the first night I was up like, what are these sounds? He was making all, all kinds of noises. I thought he was waking up. So I'd pick him up and he'll still be asleep. Oh my God, noisy. Noisy, 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 I tell you. But yeah, he's been home. And uh, we've had a lot of like hospital visits and having a premature baby means that people will be coming and checking on him all the damn time. So we had a lot of hospital visits, a lot of poking and prodding and blood tests. And I was looking at his arms lately and he's got so many little marks from all the cannulas that he had in his arm or all the like different kinds of prodding that they were doing throughout his whole hospital stay and I just feel so sad looking at them. Hopefully he doesn't remember all that because that is really traumatic to think about. Such a small person going through all that. You know what's crazy? I, I remember being so adamant that I was like, Kay has to catch him when I give birth. When I give birth, either I'm pulling him out myself or Kay's catching him because I don't want a stranger to touch my baby first. And then the way that my birth ended up being, 
the complete opposite. He was born into a plastic bag. I didn't even see him for the first, I don't know how many minutes of his life. I wasn't able to hold him until day five of his life. Yeah. But now, hold him every day, give him all the kisses. He loves a good kiss. <laughs> he loves getting kissed on. He loves he loves being loved and I love it. He's a very affectionate baby boy. So now he is how old is he? He is almost eight months actual age, like from the day he was born. And he is almost five months from his due date. So we call that five months corrected. And that is the age that we go by when it comes to his milestones and all that stuff. So like if I'm basing it off of when he's meant to crawl or when he's meant to walk and all that kind of thing, um, they base it off of his corrected age. But when it comes to, when it comes to like immunizations, they base it off of his actual age, which really annoyed me because he was getting his eight week injections. I don't know about any other country, but in the UK, you get three sets of immunizations when the babies are born. You don't have to, it's optional, but it's at eight weeks old, 12 weeks old and 16 weeks old. He was eight weeks old and they were giving him his first set of injections. He wasn't even meant to be out of the stomach at eight weeks old. Uh, yet you're injecting my poor baby felt so bad and it was horrible to witness but they did it he was fine he screamed a lot but he was fine and then the 12 week ones oh my gosh and then the 16 the poor boy by the time he had his third set of injections he was only meant to be one month old he was not meant to have all of those injections yet but that's how they do it so it is what it is but yeah his birthday is the day he was born, so in March. But every other thing else, like developmentally, we go by his June due date, which some people don't understand. They'll be like, nah, he's still five, he's only four months. I'm like, no, <laughs> he was born. He came out the womb in March, okay? That's his birthday. That's the day that we will celebrate because that's the day he was born. I'm not gonna celebrate the day he was due. Who does that? Apart from obviously, as a like a little, oh yeah, this would have been his birthday, uh, kind of thing. But not, oh, he's only this many months old, no. Maybe because it's a way to, um, like originally, when strangers ask me how old my son is, I would say, oh, he's seven months, but he would have been four months if he was born on time. He was born early. That's what I would usually do. But then recently I um, started going swimming lessons with him and there's another mum who gave birth a day before I did and her child would have been, I think she's two months early. When somebody asked her how old her son is, she just said seven months. No ifs or buts. She was just like, yeah, he's seven months old. And then I was like, that gives me the right to then also say, yeah, my son is seven months old. I don't, I don't need to tell you all the story of why he looks younger than seven months. He is actually, that's his age. He is seven months old. This one looks a bit gappy. Why is it so gappy? Is this the same? Okay. All right. So I have an idea in my head of what I want to do to this hair. But how is it going to work? I don't know. I know. Do I? I'll go here. Okay. I'm not even going to tell you what style I'm doing. You guys just going to have to wait and see. So that's one. Oh, look at this. Ugh. One section. tell you one thing I learned from this pregnancy yeah. it is not the being pregnant that makes people put on weight it's the once the baby gets here that makes people put on weight because after I gave birth my body 
snapped. I wouldn't even say snapped back because I was in the best shape of my life. My body just snapped, yeah? Then, once Nazir came home, and once I had no time to really eat healthy or think about cooking things, I was ordering food. I still am ordering. I'm even looking what to order right now. Because I get hungry and I'm like, do I have time to cook? No, I don't have time to cook. Do I have the patience to cook? Not really, not right now. So what am I going to order? Vegan McDonald's. So then I end up ordering McDonald's. And all the weight just comes to me. It just piles on. And honestly, that's the hard part. Gaining weight once the baby is out. And you have to think about looking after them and feeding yourself. Do you want to stay hungry for a bit so you can cook? No, I want to eat right now. And if that means eating a pack of crisps or five, then I will eat five packs of crisps. <laughs> if that means ordering some Uber Eats, I'll order some Uber Eats. Another thing that I've realized, I don't know about everyone, but for me, my motivation has gone out the window. I am not motivated to do anything. All I wanna do, or all I gotta do, is look after the baby and sleep and eat. If I find time to do anything in between that, then that is good. Shout out to my widow's peak gang. Oh God, I'm ripping up here. I am trying to figure out exactly how I want to do this. I want to basically have three Bantu knots here, have beads at the end. I mean, did I mention I'm going to go see Wakanda forever? <laughs> I don't think I mentioned that. So I'm like, my hair has to be on point. I'm going to watch and be engrossed in the life of Wakanda. So let me make sure my hair is on point. So what I'm going to do is I'm thinking to kind of do a similar thing here as in like use this as the center point. So with this one, I used the beginning at my widow's peak as a center point. I'm going to use this little corner angle. I don't know what to call that. This little triangle as a center point and then just go like that and then do the same thing here. So then I'll have three little Bantu knots. So I am going to start off with Hmm, the issue is my hairline. See this? It's a bit awkward. So I'm going to have to do something a bit different where... How am I going to do this? I mean, I could. But it's going to be too thin. So I'm thinking out loud. I want to, in theory, go across, but because of this little thin piece of hair, and then there'll be this thick piece, that might not work. So I might need to do it bit differently where I start off here and use that piece as my first one and then go across with the next one I think that's how we're gonna do it 
but yeah motherhood motherhood is bittersweet bittersweet is that the word i want to use it has its downsides like not being yourself not feeling yourself um lack of motivation um and just like lack of time and sleep but the upside oh my gosh i feel like a majority of the time i'm up majority of the time i'm enjoying like being a mom and watching my son grow and seeing him do new things and just when he looks in your eyes oh my gosh just melts my heart honestly i do love being this boy's mom but let's not pretend like everything is all hanky dory you know it has its ups and its downs but on the whole i enjoy it but being self-employed and a new mom is not easy it's like if i don't work i'm not getting money so i gotta work i mean youtube is good in the sense that my videos that i have up already make me money but at the same time i want to be able to not just be comfortable but thrive financially i think that's my thing i'm too comfortable now i have to be like okay Ida, let's become a millionaire like why are we just chilling here let's push to the next level and i think that's the hardest part because you might have moments or i have moments where i'm like yep i'm motivated i need this to work i need to do this this and that i know what i'm gonna do and then i have a night where Nazir's waking up multiple times and making noise and I'm just knackered the next day and all motivation has gone out the window. I just need to figure out how to balance things. That's my main thing. Figure out how to balance everything and then, yeah, then life will be up. I'm hoping that the next time I come on here and do like a video like this, like a get ready with me kind of comro video, by then, I'd be like, guys, I figured it out. I know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. We'll see. I just hope that. I hope that that's how it's going to happen. Or well, that's what's going to happen. Just got to, if you're a new mom out there or if you're a mom in general or if you're a carer or whatever, just give yourself some grace and give yourself some time figure things out because you have to trust the process not everything will come to you at once you have to go through things to be able to get yourself in the right mindset in the right frame of mind to be able to do life and thrive while doing life and that's what I'm trying to get myself to I see it coming slowly, slowly. I'm getting there. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> but yeah, it's not the easiest thing. And I am very grateful that I have such a supportive husband. A husband that helps out a lot. Um, oh God. Like, I'm not doing this all on my own. He does have help. He does help me and I know there's people out there that don't have any help at all who manage who manage to do a lot of things. And I comment, oh my god, I the way I am so like in awe of people who are able to do this alone. And uh, don't get me wrong, I know it's hard. Like I know that it's a struggle. But for those people out there who do it alone, like have to do it alone. I, my heart goes out to you, ma'am. Honestly, this is not easy, even as a married couple, like to do it by yourself. And even those out there who are married, but get no help, because that's also a thing. Where the man feels like it's a woman's job to just look after the baby and that's it. Yeah, that stuff is not easy either. But you will get through it. It will get easier and different challenges will come along the way as a child grows up. But right now, my main thing is that Nazir wants to be standing up all the time. Before it was like he wants to sit 
and he can't sit. So he would want to do things that his body is unable to do. So you have to help him do it all the time. So before it was, he didn't want to lie down. He wanted to be sitting up. So I'll help him sit up constantly, holding him up. Now it's more like, I don't want to sit up. I want to stand up. I want to stand and I want to look at toys from this angle and play with them. And it's like, oh, babes, we're not fully even sitting down properly yet. Can you just calm down? And then you have to constantly hold him up. So that's tiring. So I'm hoping the time where he's able to move by himself, even though I know once he's mobile, I'm going to be chasing him all over the place. But I'm hoping it will be a bit easier to just let him do his own thing because he's quite an independent baby. But he just needs help because his body is unable to do what his mind wants to do. And I don't know if that's just a baby thing in general or if it's the fact that he was born early and his mind is a bit more... Um, I think wants to do things faster because he's been here longer I don't know that's just my own theory can you believe it's almost the end of the year that to me is wild to be honest this whole year <laughs> has gone by so fast I like to say it's a write-off as in like I don't feel like this year happened but the most amazing thing happened this year so I can't even act like something nothing happened but from January this this year I would say January January, February this year, I was suffering with my pregnancy. From suffering to pregnancy, to then being hospital for two weeks, giving birth, to then having a baby and going back and forth between hospital and home, to then <laughs> baby coming home. Like, I felt like I had no time to catch my breath this year at all. No time to really do um, life this year. So I feel like my 29th birthday didn't happen. I mean, I spent it in hospital. So am I really turning 30 soon? I don't know. I'm doing turning 29 again, man. Let me enjoy my birthday properly this time around. Thirty, yeah. What the hell? I started this YouTube channel when I was in uni. Almost 10 years ago. Next year will be 10 years since I started my YouTube channel and I've been doing it on and off I haven't been consistent with it by any means no way but I've been doing it on and off and it's mainly centered around hair this whole time and my hair has gone through so many changes and oh my gosh I want to shave my hair off again I tell you the way it's been neglected you guys saw at the beginning of this video how my hair has been neglected the way it's been neglected the way I cannot be bothered to do it I'm just like, life is easier with short hair. What am I doing to myself? So if you see me come in here and shave my hair, you know why. <laughs> Don't be surprised, basically. There are a few videos that I want to do before shaving my hair, and that's the only reason. <laughs> like, literally, last week, I was like, I need to cut it off, man. But there are videos that I would love to film before cutting it off, and that's the only reason why I haven't cut it off. Because you know me, I'm so spontaneous. If an idea comes in my mind, it's like an illness that takes over. Like I can't do anything if I don't do that thing. So, the fact that I haven't shaved my hair off is a miracle, honestly. You know, I didn't think this hairstyle through properly. I should have done a straight line here and based my parts off that and the same way through here, I should have done a straight line there and there, but next time. You live and you learn. I mean, it's the first time trying this style. So if I was to do it again, there's definitely some stuff I would change as well as probably the direction that I go on. Because I would have loved it to have more of a differentiating part. So the middle is there and then these ones obviously go in that way. I think it should have gone more like that rather than like that. But that's just my thoughts while I'm doing this hair. Like I said, a lot of the time I'm doing my hair but I don't have a plan. Like <laughs> I have a brief idea. Like today I had a brief idea but executing it i didn't think that bit through now i know that next time i will do it a bit differently 
I am definitely out of practice when it comes to cornrowing my hair. It has been so long. I don't even know if I've came at it since having him. Have I? I don't think I have, you know. I think it's been a good few months. So this is my first time getting back into the swing of it. And the style definitely has its... Um, Definitely, what am I doing? The style definitely has room for improvement. So, and like I said, I know next time what to do differently. Oh, my back and my arm. But the good thing about it is it didn't take as long as I thought. Once the middle was done, the sides were a lot quicker. To do and how long did it take that's a good question I did have a break in between to eat I would like to say two hours which does seem very long still but I think that's how long it took around about two hours maybe an hour and a half all right so I'm going to add some beads to the ends of these braids at the front and might just add a bit of gel to some of my baby hairs and take out the braids at the back and I will show you the final look okay with this um, I just twist it nice tight twist and then wrap it around itself Little bantu, little bantu knot. I'ma just add some beads, try to do something to the front, take up these, and I'll be right back. It's done, guys. I can't lie. I am feeling. Oh, I humbled. That's what I'm feeling humbled very quickly i am feeling myself i love the way that this turned out despite the whole parting issue accessories 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 really bring out a certain je ne sais quoi when it comes to hairstyles i don't get and also look at this look at let me just get let me get up just oh look how scrumptious that looks what is that my hair <laughs> Look at how scrumptious this braid out looks. And let's get into the accessories, shall we? Let's get in to the accessories. We added a little gold thread. We added some beadies. We tried to do something with the baby hairs, but you know me and baby hairs. Uh, we just play around with them and see what happens. But I am honestly feeling myself. What kind of forever? Hmm. You'll be seeing me soon, eh? You will be seeing me shortly. I might have to do a couple of selfies before my son comes home because I have not graced this camera in a while. And I'm feeling myself right now, so... Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, I'll be back again very soon. I kind of promise when my next video will come up, but um, make sure you follow me on Instagram because I am very active on there. And I will see you guys next time. Peace, love, and light.